Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Deltana number EP475 edge pole in a US3 or 605. It'd be better to call it 605 uh, finish. And here's what it looks like removed from the packaging. This type of edge pole has been an item that has appeared in trim and auxiliary hardware catalogs for decades. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a 19th century piece of hardware um, at all. In fact, I can't recall having seen one in a catalog that old, but I'm sure if I searched Corbin or, you know, Yale in town, or maybe a Sargent turn of the century catalog, there's probably one in there. Um, this is a classic edge pull. It's going to be mortised to the edge of the door. You're going to use your finger, pull that up and out. Now you've got a way by which to pull that door out of its pocket. It's a sliding door, right? It slides. And there's two uses of the term pocket as it applies to doors. They're very different. The residential application, um, well, the residential application could be either, but that means when you've got a cavity and a wall and your door slides into that cavity or the pocket inside of a wall. The other term pocket, which you'll see very commonly in, ho in hospitals and hotels, but also in residential, would use what is called a, uh, is what is referred to as a pocket hinge or a pocket pivot or a Harman hinge. If you see the term Harman hinge, that's easy to find, uh, or pocket pivot. Pocket doors, meaning that they will swing into a pocket that's created and the pivot point, the vertical axis of pivoting on a swinging pocket door, is such that that door is removed out of the opening and does not project into the opening beyond what the stop dimension would be. So if you had a hollow metal frame, a pair of three foot six doors, you have a seven foot wide opening. Well, the distance between the stops is probably going to be about 82 and three quarter if, you've, if you have five eight stops. When those two doors open into their pockets, they won't encroach into that 82 and three quarter inch space. That's the other term pocket. But for this piece of hardware, we're referring to almost always the residential application of a sliding door into a cavity pocket door. Okay. So that's a little conversation on the difference on pocket door locks. Well, as we said, we're dealing with one that's going to pull us right out of the pocket. You'll still need some sort of a face pull or a flush pull when the door is open is is in the closed position to be able to slide that back. Um, it's a very typical and common uh, piece of equipment. Installing this, mortising this, is easy and straightforward. If you are replacing one, um, there is not. At least I don't believe there is a. Well, there's a cut sheet which we will. Okay, we'll take a look at that when we switch to the screen view. Overall height is four inch. Looks like it's a little shy on that. Three and 15. Overall width, about three quarter inch. Overall depth, about an inch and five eighths. This is made of solid brass. It's not 100% brass. Certainly that spring that's there is going to be steel based. And of course, that's what you would want. Uh, based on the dimensional properties, it will likely fit very well into one that you are potentially replacing and you might be replacing it just because of a bad spring you know the brass isn't really going to fail uh, in terms of it being a metal the finish will, will wear a couple of screws are included to get it installed okay so how to go about installing this if you're just swapping one out we'll look at the template in a moment we'll be able to look at the uh, size of the unit if you're doing a new installation it's really simple and straightforward what I like to do when I uh, prep for one of these Having a caliper is the second most important tool to the woodworker with the router probably being first. I like to be able to get on there and, and put my caliper on it. And they say three quarter, well it's actually 0.752 to you know two thousandths of an inch matter. No, that, that would even work in a in a in a in a, in a pin tumbler cylinder. Uh, but it's really nice to be able to know what you're prepping before you start cutting something that may not be so easy to reverse. Uh, once you've made the prep. So what I do with this sort of thing is I just visualize what I've got to install or what I have to prep and I know that I'm going to have to be right here, right in this area, down to right about here in terms of accommodating this body. So I would go this height, I would go basically the same width even though I could make it ever so slightly less 
and then I would go to that depth we talked about earlier. And that would allow me to fit the body in, but I'm going to have to add the thickness of the plate to my depth and then mortise the plate itself, the four inch, the three quarter, and then the thickness of the plate, which is probably a hundred thousandth, let's say. Hmm, the kid's good. 0 0.102. 0 0.102. So you're going to mortise that to that proper sort of depth, what you're going to do. It's that easy to prep for these. Let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look at some supporting documentation. So this is indeed the item that we are looking at. And immediately, it's this item is available in different finishes, and by the time you're seeing this video, you'll be able to review the different finishes available. Your brasses, your bronze, your chromes, nickel, satin polished, black is here as well. Okay. Four inch, three quarter inch, pull lever opening 39 degrees. Okay, I've never seen that value defined. Cut sheet, and that's going to be a technical drawing, a reasonable technical drawing of the item. Okay. You know, if you're replacing one, you're really looking for three quarter by four. It'd be nice to check three and three eighths. The rest is going to fall in line if this matches the overall size, would be my guess. So simple and straightforward. There's a link here below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can review not only all of the Deltana products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog is here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, now it's a very nice quality item in the sense of, you know, it's a piece of brass. I would say that it's a nice quality item. Um, lots of people make this material. The name Deltana is synonymous with imported brass type builder's hardware, and they have a very comprehensive offering. What makes Deltana notable is two things. You'll find items that Deltana offers that have been long discontinued. Uh, so you might want to review their catalog, and I personally find their website uh, a more uh, approachable way to quickly look at their overview primary categories. Number two is their inventory is generally very deep, meaning they've got a thousand of these and you need six. Or the other side of that coin is that they're out of stock and will be so for 14 weeks. But I can tell you from my experience, that's pretty rare that they're out of stock. So they generally have a very good inventory in terms of quantity available. So I take a look at them for those two reasons. You know, good quality people over there as well. They are genuinely um, interested in being able to supply you with material that they sell. And they do a good job with it. They're prompt, reliable, predictable, things that you would expect of, of a, you know, a company that wants to earn your business, and they do. Any questions on the Deltana EP74, EP475, forgive me, and the US3 or polished brass finish or any other Deltana product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. If you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please click subscribe as well and even share the video with someone that you know. And if you have any questions for a future video, please send them our way and we will make every attempt to oblige. And thank you very much.